down to ensure that I take the law. Contrary the evidence. But, but, but obviously that is controversial. We might. Um, well, <laughs> <laughs> but but you know, and it comes back a bit to, to this, you know. So so when the you know when the the religious zealot stops me on the street and says, you know, um, if you you know accept the love of Christ, um, I don't need to say to them, well, no, I haven't, you know, and there's a very good reason, you know, um, dot dot dot. I, I get to just ignore. Them. So the mere fact they've made a claim doesn't mean that I've got to engage in debate with them. And this comes back to, to this sort of stuff. So I, I mean, I think I think there is a problem for our view here, but but it's going to be a problem for any of these views. How do you actually explain why we don't have to engage with every claim that anybody makes um, and drop everything we're working on to you know, <laughs> just because someone's made a flaky claim about apricot seeds? You know, why don't I have to suddenly go off and disprove it? Um, a sensible view has to, be able to explain why we get to ignore some of those views and why ignoring them isn't dogmatic. Um, and so we're trying to do that, but I think, but I think it is a, you know, there's a, there's an issue here, there's a sort of problem, I think. I guess it's <coughs> not just a sort of philosophical question of whether you should ignore them, though, but it's also sort of a, well, I don't know how to phrase it, maybe ethical or practical sort of question of how you allocate your time as well. Yeah, yeah so, so some people responded to this, to the science bit of this, by saying actually the unequal allocation of the burden of proof in science is, is practically very useful. Um, so um, it, there's something to be said for setting up research teams and sending that team away to prove the truth of that claim. Um, you're much like lawyers in a way, and saying, so that's your brief. Um, do everything you can to either knock down or, or, or um, uh, substantiate that claim, and we'll go off and work on our bit you know, over here, and so you would divide the debate up a bit. Um, and some people said to us, well, look, it's just, it's just useful. You know, it, it, there's no deep philosophical issue here, particularly. Um, it turns out to be a useful way of pursuing the truth. And you don't want to have every scientist, you know, thinking of every possible objection to their position, because you know they'll never get anywhere. They um, won't be able to answer any question until they've answered them all. At some point, you have to accept some of the background and get going. And you might think a useful way to divide the debate up is saying, well, you can accept that bit of background, you can accept that bit of background, be dogmatic about that, um, and we'll try and put the whole thing together at the end. And in science, there's also resource allocation issues. I mean, there just isn't quite enough money to go around, and we can't yeah. keep financing every, every attorney. Yeah. So you have to triage somehow. Yeah, so we would like to prove the apricot cancer nutters and nutters, but who's got the time? <laughs> <laughs> so, cases like, uh, oh, not cases, but also, so in general stuff, like when there's no, oh, Evidence from either point of view to point uh, prove a topic. Like, what should um, your stance should be? Be open-minded and you know, like sometimes ignoring if it's irrelevant. But for example, if it's important, um, at one time I was like losing my purpose of existence, like meaning of life. Um, I fell into like really bad panic, frantic situation. Um, what? Should um, person should do that? Like, there's no good evidence to prove the topic, but it's it's important. To be. So, so I'm not, I'm not sure how this connects with the you know the existential um, challenge of you know what's the what makes life worthwhile or anything. But but in general, I think on topics where there just there is no evidence on either side, um, yes, you I mean the good reasoner. Um, if it matters, presumably does look for evidence and tries to resolve it. If it's the case that you have to resolve, then you you try and seek reasons to go one way or the other. But um, if you can't find any, then you might then you might just have to choose on pragmatic grounds. I would yeah. only in that existential crisis. Is there a room in my life situation? You have to you kind of have to pick something and go on. I, I can't even imagine what that question is actually. Oh, sorry. No, 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 no. I mean, I mean, to be like that, I can't. 
So I can't think what, you know, what would settle. So apparently it's a question, I guess, what does, what does it mean to say one's life has meaning? Um, um, oh, but I'll say, I, you want to know the purpose of like, your existence, right? Right. Okay. Well, 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 why, why are you here? The reason You're a truth-seeking machine. Believe more truth. There could be. There, there is a purpose, or there's not a purpose. Yeah. But there's no like evidence. Like that's why um, I believe like people seek guidance to like follow like God's will. Like, sure. Something like that. But um, <laughs> say you want to find your own. Um, and so I mean, one one thing you might think here is that it's a mistake to think of, of that sort of question. Um, as, as the kind of question which is amenable to evidence on one side or the other, such that you have a debate about what, you know, I take it down. This, this, these might be facts about emotions and psychology rather than anything that's going to be settled by an argument. Um, uh, and so, I mean, I can't quite get my head around what, what one would say to someone who really thought, you know, because they didn't know the purpose of life, they were you know, in existential crisis, except to say, oh, come on, there's a lot of fun to be had out there. <laughs> you know, no, we're no more than that. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I'm saying. So I would have thought, I mean, in that general sort of situation, you've got, there are two possibilities. It might be possible to be agnostic and to just keep on kind of gathering, gathering information if you think there's a possibility that it might be settled one way or other by finding out more. And it's possible not to decide right now, but just to kind of continue and then wait and see. Then you could do that. You could be agnostic. But then there are some cases in which you can't, for some reason, you, you know, there's, there's a famous case about the existence of God. Um, Pascal said, you have to decide. You're, kind of, you're, you're, you're in this world. You choose to live one way or another way. You have to make a choice. Is there a God or isn't there a God? This will determine how you live. Um, so you have to pick. Um, so in a case where you have to pick, there's no way to just sit on the fence and not decide. Then I would have thought you can decide and there's no evidence and no possible evidence. Then you decide on the kind of practical grounds what, what, what will make things work best, what will be okay for me to, to act on the assumption of. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's right. <laughs> so this one, like one of them, has to be picked sort of randomly until like, yeah. so that becomes like long belief, belief for a long time until it's proven by something else, for example. But it's flat. Like, you have to. So. Actually, yeah. 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 Um, you know, almost, almost no one ever believed that. Actually, it's, the proponents of the belief the Earth is flat have been much exaggerated. People have known it around for a very long time, um, but, um, um, but but you might. I mean, if you um, so whether the Earth was flat or not, I guess might have been a matter of indifference to you, unless you're trying to sail around the world. Um, or not, or not yet, or not. Well, you know, if you're in the middle of the Russian steppes. Uh, um, yes. Sorry, did you? Yeah. <coughs> um. Do you think it's possible to make a sort of a a priori-ish probabilistic argument against certain, I guess it would depend on the claim, but claiming that certain thing exists or something mm -hmm. like that, when it's quite a specific claim that's being made, couldn't you sort of just say it's rather improbable that this particular thing with these particular properties you're saying exists unless you provide evidence that it does? If you give reasons for the improbability of it. Yeah, I guess, I guess it does yeah. come down to that. Um, but actually, again, I, I do think there are probabilistic challenges to our, to our view. Um, um, there where, you, where you might say, look, um, uh, if, you, if you really think the the default probabilities are uh, um, dramatically unequal, um, then of course you don't need to, you may well allocate the burden of proof unequally um, on the less probable view, um, um, provided you can tell some antecedent story about the, or some story about the antecedent probabilities. But, um, and so you might think you allocate the burden of proof unequally because the, the less probable view has more work to do to get over the hump. Um, 
um, I think that is possible actually. I don't know where. I'm not much to say about the year. What do the probabilities rest on? I mean, that's that, that's kind of the, the point. Is you're getting an argument that it's improbable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So then that is a burden on you to provide that as part of the job. Right. Yeah. Would it be fair to say that, um, well, I'm sort of talking about you as one person, but um, don't you don't think that um, the concept of the burden of proof is really necessary at all, at least in terms of truth rather than practical things or law or whatever? Well, that's a, we, sorry, is the question, um, you know, if, you, if you accept our view, might we just dump the burden of proof? Um, and so I, th I think so, yes, because, uh, yeah, so one, one result of thinking that it's equally allocated might just be to say, you know, we don't, there isn't really a burden, um, other than saying every reasonable, every good reason of six reasons for the beliefs, beliefs they hold. Um, Can you just present reasons? Yeah, so, so I think, yeah, that might be right. Yeah. 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 Um, Are there any more questions?